Hi, Revivers. I'm Dr. Lin of Rehab and Revive Physical Therapy, where we rehab the mind and revive the body. So we're all on here today to learn a little bit more about vertigo. It's been one of the hot topics, what hot videos on our channel has been blowing up. And I want to get a little bit more in depth, take a deeper dive and give you the right solutions that we would do here at the clinic. So stay tuned. So I'm excited to teach you three exercises that we do here at the clinic to help get rid of vertigo. But first, I wanna talk about the causes and then maybe the why we're doing some of these exercises. The cause of vertigo can stem from a few different places. It could stem from the neck. There's lots of nerves that influence into and infiltrate the ears. There's the inner ear, the middle ear, and the outer ear that can really start mucking things up when they're all tangled. The second is a lot of times there's these crystals that are happening in the inner ear inside tubes that are really thrown off course and they're really thrown outside the tubes and really can also give you that perception or different pers uh, uh, proprioception or swaying that happens that really isn't necessarily there. So that's a, almost an internal thing. Uh, the third is actually a lot of times with our ba balance, it's related to our eyes. So we want an exercise that's good with our eyes. So stay tuned. We're gonna talk about the three exercises we do and get rid of vertigo. Now, if you're a little confused with the abbreviated version on this video, we have more in-depth videos of these specific exercises in our channel. We'll link those below in the description. So check those out if you wanna learn a little bit more or you're just a little bit confused about some of the directions. All right, so our first exercise, we wanna get the nerves free that's around your skull and your brain there's something called a tentorium membrane uh, that's a saran wrap that kind of can clamp down the nerves inside your skull we want to free that up loosen that up get a little bit more space a lot of our philosophy here at rehab revive is actually to treat the nerves first before we go after anything mechanical so um, that's why we call it neuromechanical therapy so here's the exercise right here you basically want to take your your fingers you want to pull your basically as far as your inner ear you can get, and you wanna pull that earlobe. Uh, it becomes like a little bunny antenna where you're trying to find the most tension. Um, and that's where we're trying to head. And once you find that tension, you can do deep breathing. What sometimes happens is actually you get your eustachian tube uh, freed up. So you can do a uh, eustachian tube exercise too to kind of create some let or decompress some of the pressure that could be happening from the sinuses. So it's inhale through your nose, swallow, and then exhale out of your mouth. So a lot of times when you get that tension, you can inhale and you really can get these tubes, this drainage of your sinus. So you might get that as a coincidental uh, benefit. And then another one is just using your jaw, kind of opening and closing. You might feel that stretch, that deep inner ear stretch. Uh, now, I've been testing uh, other ways to get a little bit deeper into the stretch because when I treat, I'm using my thumb. So I sometimes go across like this and I'll do the same thing, try to find the most tension. Um, whatever you prefer, I'm cool with it. And so that's the first exercise. So the next exercise is to influence a reflex called the vestibular ocular reflex. It's usually in being charged, uh, charged up or overused uh, related to the cranial nerves inside our brain. So this is how you want to set it up. You basically want to take a pen or a stick. You want to move it and bring it to the point where it starts becoming two. Um, and for me, it's right about there. Usually you want about like a thumb's length. It should get to this close, but right at this point it gets it's already two so I'm getting to the point right about here starts turning two so I can just bring it forward and back once you actually have that a little bit closer you can work on going left and right like in a dome so if I can go I can go to the right pretty far with my peripheries the left I'm starting to strain right about here it looks kind of like double over here at this point so you can see how much further I can go here doesn't turn like double but over here starts looking like two and so I can work in and out in and out there's these, these muscles are weak and they really could get some 
influence and benefit by using the right muscles and I can go a little bit further now. So I'd have to do this a little bit more. This left side generally has been notoriously worse for me. Left side of my eye, left side of my vestibular systems also having general use, uh, issues. Uh, sometimes these things can happen because uh, you've had a concussion. So I've had a head blow onto this side as well. So um, I'm probably working out some of these uh, problems right now. All right, so this is the last exercise for helping vertigo. We've already done the eye movement, we've done the nerve freeing. Now what you want to do is work on that mechanical part. So if you still have like a loose crystal that could be in there, this is how you want to do it. Now we have this video a little bit more in depth. We're going to go through this one a little bit quicker. But how do you find which side you want to start? Uh, use the Dix Hall Pike. It's basically your legs out and you just fall back and you can check that out if you kind of fall back quickly. I'm doing it a little slower, but in real time it'll look probably more like this. Now if you have a back problem, probably not a good idea. You need some assistance with that, so check with your healthcare professional. Now if it's the left side, I just go, I just turn my head to the left as I'm falling down simultaneously. So usually someone at a clinic will hold your head and turn it whichever way because you don't know what's coming, but at home, this is how I would do it. I would check it. And allow about 30, 40, 50 seconds for it to start spinning. If it spins on that side, that's the side you wanna start. So fortunately, I don't have any spinning. Uh, I'm gonna start, and just because the nature of the camera being this way, we wanna start on the right. We'll pretend that the world was spinning this way on the right side when I turn my head with this test. So here's how you wanna start. Basically, I do a little bit more modified and a little bit more conservative too. I think this is the, the thought process. So I start on the side that I wanna work with. Um, if you don't happen to have two access access to both sides, the the goal is to find like a bench, a workout bench, or something like that. Or maybe you could try to do it on your couch. So if it's my right side, I'm on the right side of the the table. Uh, what I want to do is I'm gonna start here, and then I'm gonna fall down here to the side, and start there. Now you're gonna hold all this until the the dizziness slows. Now when the dizziness slows. Uh, what you want to do next is you're going to turn your head up and you're going to wait because basically what you're doing is you're just kind of turning the steering wheel just a little bit. So you're going to wait. If it spins, you let it spin out and then you can kind of move your, your basically your, your leg up to the middle. You're going to wait for it to spin. Then what you're going to do is you're going to turn your head again. You're going to lead with your head. If it's spinning again. And you wait for the spinning. And what you want to do is then you're going to turn your body. Wait for it to spin out one more time. And then you'll pop up. And then you'll start this process all over again. You're going to keep doing this until the spinning stops. Now every day or every session that you do this particular exercise, you're gonna have to do it until the, the spinning stops. So it could be three reps, it could be like 50. And if it's like that much, you're gonna just keep, it could take you an hour, it could take you an hour and a half, but you're gonna keep doing it until it slows down. Now the less frequent or the less amount of repetitions that you're gonna require to do the epilese, this modified epilese, then that means you're getting better. So, and don't be surprised, sometimes it does switch on people. It might start on that side. That's okay, don't freak out. It's not the end of the world. Just do do this exercise on that side. Maybe Monday it's this, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday it's the other side. That's okay, it's perfectly fine. And what's gonna happen is you'll see probably, you know, over 10 days, uh, that it slowly gets less and less and less and less and you know when you have three straight days where it's not spinning and you've done all the other exercises I would say you're in the clear and you're kind of able to get those crystals back in 
Now, there's really no alternatives unless you want to go for ear surgery, and even that's not very good. Most ENTs or most uh, surgeons are going to avoid that. So yeah, give this a shot. So taking on the approach of helping the neck, helping the ears and the nerves related to that, and helping your eyes, that's a perfect sequence or solution to the problem that we hopefully don't have to miss. Sometimes if you just do one type of exercise, it may or may not work. So we're really taking the sandwich effect and really helping that out. Uh, you know, hopefully this is safe for you. I check with your healthcare professional first. Uh, highly recommend that since we're dealing with dizziness and vertigo. There could be other reasons for that. So make sure you rule those out and you're able to do these. But I love these exercises and they're great for our clients. If you like what we're doing, uh, I'm really excited to kind of, you know, add more. A lot of you have been subscribing, so please subscribe. And if you have any feedback to this specific video, we'd love to hear a little bit more. Uh, if it's good, give it a thumbs up. If it's not working, you know, then yeah, we'd love to know a little bit more how we can be better. So I'm Dr. Lin. Remember, we heal smarter, not harder.